Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share some of the things that I've added to my winter wardrobe. Now I actually admittedly kind of picked up most of the things that I needed for my winter wardrobe this year during autumn. So I am going to link my autumn wardrobe additions up here if you haven't had a chance to watch that one yet. I have a split of items that I purchased myself and then also three items that were gifted to me and they were kind of the standout pieces that I wanted to share. So I'm going to dive in with the first piece which I am probably the most excited about <laughs> of all of these and it is a cashmere sweater. This one is from Nardum and this is a brand that so many of you had told me to check out and for a long time I just thought I can't justify adding another cashmere sweater to my wardrobe but in the art of science <laughs> I wanted to kind of see how this stacked up to the other cashmere crew sweaters that I already own. I went for the oatmeal color which is a really soft biscuity hue and I really love the fact that there's a slight speckle to the material. Now I will say when it comes to sizing it can be a little bit confusing because it is unisex. I actually went for a size small so it has really long Long sleeves and it is a little bit longer in the body and you can kind of see it's quite a loose fit on me so do keep that in mind if you are petite then the sleeves are gonna be very long on you because on me they do go probably almost to the ends of my fingertips comparing this to my other cashmere sweaters I would say this is one of the softest ones that I own it might even be the softest one it's basically on par with kind of the hand feel of the Mott Bow white sweater that I have however I have said that there are some discrepancies there in terms of the colors and I'm not sure if it's just batches uh, but I have found a really interesting article about why cashmere differs and I am going to put that in the description box below because I think it is 100% worth reading. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm so pleased with this. So thank you so much to everyone who actually recommended that I go and buy one. Um, I really love the color and this is shaping up to be kind of one of my favorites of the moment. I think we might as well keep on the topic of knitwear just seeing as I have another sweater here and this one's actually a cardigan. It's a pre-love purchase and I'm actually going to be talking about this more in another video that I've got planned talking all about how to shop pre-loved. It is coming. I've had quite a few questions. <laughs> this is from Vince and it's just a really nice oversized charcoal cardigan. I wanted something that was really big, snuggly and warm. Our house gets really cold. We have one of those 50 star houses. There's no insulation in the walls. We are currently thinking about getting insulation put in um, just because it'll really help with the winter. So I find myself feeling very chilly when I'm indoors during the day. And while I don't mind putting the heater on, I don't want to have to rely on it all the time. So I thought something like this would be a really great way to kind of keep warm while I'm working at my desk. I love the weave on the fabric here. I think it is just so beautiful. It's just not such a nice detail and I find Vince just do beautiful quality garments, very classic designs, things that you will have for years and I've been so pleased with everything that I've bought from the brand previously. They are more of a expensive or premium brand so it is one that I do try to find pre-loved where I can. Maybe we'll talk about an accessory before I move on to the bottoms that I've purchased and this is another pre-loved purchase. And I think you guys are going to be a little bit surprised, especially if you've seen one of my previous videos. I decided to buy a Celine Trio. Now, <laughs> this wasn't a purchase that I kind of just made on a whim. I have been talking about adding a new design handbag to my collection. And having seen Anna Newton from the Anna Edit go on and on about her Celine Trio, she wears it all the time. I just thought maybe it's a bag that I need to give a second chance. If you don't know this already, I have previously owned a Celine Trio. It was one of the first designer bags that I purchased when I moved to Australia back in 20. 14. I got it in a beautiful cerulean blue. It was called lavender, but it was blue. Uh, but it just didn't match my lifestyle at the time. I was working in an office. I carried my lunch to work every day. So it wasn't the bag that I was carrying to work. And it just wasn't the bag that I was reaching for every single weekend. So it was a little bit wasted on me. I will put some photos so you can see. It was beautiful. And while I do kind of wish that I still had it in my collection, there are a few other reasons why I decided to let it go. Ultimately, I did find that it was quite a delicate bag. I was paranoid about getting it scratch and also I'd only worn it six times and one of these little notches that you use to adjust the strap fell off and when I went to take it to Celine to get it repaired they told me that I had passed the one year mark so I hadn't even worn it more than six times in a year so to me it was just something I couldn't justify. I did a whole video on handbags that I sold and why which I'm going to link up here as well if you'd like to go and watch that. So I kind of had it in my head that I'd like to add a new Celine Trio to my wardrobe but I really wanted to get something that wasn't black but also that would be really versatile and that I could wear a lot and I spotted this one in grey on eBay and it just ticked all the boxes for me. I just thought it was a really beautiful colour, it's a neutral, it was such a good price, it was under $500 so I kind of got it for a bit of a steal. 
it definitely has signs of wear. I can see some very faint scratches on the front um, and the leather, you know, it's not as puffy or anything as it would be if it had been properly stuffed. Like mine, actually, I still kept the little uh, foamy bits inside to make sure that it looked puffy and it retained its shape. So it doesn't look perfect. However, it's the kind of bag that I know I don't have to be precious with. And that was sort of what I was looking for. I wanted a really good, um, easy, everyday bag. And I feel like for the price I paid, I mean, that's what you would pay just for a great, well-made leather bag anyway so very pleased with it and when I do my video on purchasing things secondhand I am going to talk a little bit about how to make sure that you are buying authentic designer products as well so um, do keep your eyes peeled if that's something that you have been curious to know my uh, thoughts and my tips on. Next we'll dive into a couple of skirts that I purchased uh, and the first one that I want to talk about is a slip skirt and I sort of felt like this was something that was missing from my winter wardrobe. We are so lucky here in Sydney, I've mentioned this before, but we have incredibly mild winters. I would say probably the average temperature is 17 to 19 degrees. Maybe some days it would go down to 14 degrees, but honestly, more often than not, it's a lot warmer than that. Uh, today it's 23 degrees, so you know, it's, it kind of runs the whole spectrum, but more often than not, it's warm, especially if you're out in the sun. So I wanted a really thin sort of a slip style skirt that I could wear with big chunky knit sweaters that I would feel chic in but that I could also kind of transition through to spring as well. So I spotted this one from MV and the label which I actually purchased a faux leather jacket from them ages ago which I absolutely loved and it kind of ticked all the right boxes for me. It's quite a thin material so it's either a pro or a con depending on what you're looking for. I, like I said I wanted something quite lightweight so it was perfect for me and it just has an elasticated band at the top which is what I sort of expect from I guess the realization pass skirts a similar sort of a cut and then it has this beautiful bias cut with an almost fluted uh, hem I feel like this has got quite a graceful feel to it and I have been really enjoying throwing this into my outfits on rotation. I love a midi skirt, especially on those warmer days. I will say though that I have found that it does kind of get a little bit staticky sometimes. So I have to be quite vigilant about putting a moisturizer on my legs. And also I have to be careful about the knickers that I wear with this because the material is quite thin. So if I'm wearing something lacy or with a little bow or something like that, then you will kind of be able to um, occasionally see that through the fabric. Fabric. So it's something to keep in mind, but I just thought it was a nice option. There are tons of affordable skirts like this on the Iconic. I saw quite a few. There was one from Atmos in here that I thought looked really nice, but it was more of a shiny sort of a satin silk look, whereas this one has more of a matte finish, which was what I was after. Then also from the Iconic, I purchased a pair of new black trousers. And you may have heard me mention in one of my previous videos that my black Uniqlo trousers were just a little bit too small for me. I'm not sure if my bum's gotten too big or anything. I'm a pear shape, so I carry more of my weight on in my thighs and also around my bum, but I just found that they weren't fitting me like I wanted them to. So I passed those on to a friend and I was kind of on the hunt for some really easy go-to everyday black trousers and I found some I think these are really great they're a stretch fabric um, more like a crepey polyester um, type of feel to them yeah they're polyester spandex um, these are from forecast and I have found I've had a lot of luck with trousers from forecast I think they fit very well and what I liked about these was that they don't have any kind of visible uh, buttons or anything like that on the front no button fly and there's also no pockets so they're very comfortable very stretchy as well which is perfect so it means I can indulge a little bit and not feel uncomfortable and I like the length of them too. They cut off just above my ankles. So maybe a little longer than I would normally keep my trousers, but I just think they're a good classic basic and I've really been enjoying wearing them. I love the way they look. The final more wintry item that I purchased myself that I wanted to mention is one I've already talked about my July favorites, but I thought I'd lump it in this video as well, just in case you haven't seen that one. It is my Lover Cotton Feline Trench Skirt. This is a really beautiful midi skirt. It's in such a heavyweight cotton, which I love. It feels so substantial, feels really expensive. I love the really beautiful abstract bold leopard print. I think it is so fun. It's a really great way to kind of add a little bit more color into my wardrobe and just a little bit of print. I love things like this because they just help to jazz up a lot of my outfits. Also has this belted detail here at the waist. Now I got this in the size eight. It is still a bit, I got it on sale. However, I've seen its full price on the Iconics so um, I'm not sure what the deal is there, but if you can, if you like this, I would wait and see if you can snap it up at a discount. 
um, I got mine for less than 50% off. Um, but yeah, I tried it on in the 6, which was a perfect fit, but I ended up getting it in the Australian 8, just because I wanted to be able to wear it all year round. And I thought if I was going to wear it in the winter time, I wanted to be able to tuck in really bulky sweaters. So I wanted a little bit of room around the waist. Because it has this tight waistband, it means that you can cinch it in and tie it really tightly. So it kind of gives a little bit more of a paper bag effect at the waist, which I think is really pretty. And of course it has pockets. And who doesn't love a skirt with pockets? So I'm so thrilled with this. I just think it is such a fun addition to my wardrobe and definitely something a lot more playful than you've probably seen me wearing for a while. Then let's touch on the three gifted products that I wanted to mention. The first one being the Day Tote Mini from Everlane. I have done a review on this, which is on my blog, and I'm going to link it in the description box if you kind of like to get more of an in-depth uh, review from me. But ultimately, I want to say I've been loving using this bag. This is a really great affordable alternative to the Celine Cabas tote. It also reminds me a little bit of the Celine mini nano, no wait, nano luggage tote as well for some reason. I think it might be because it's a similar size except that one has a zip up closure and of course it has that robot detail on the front. Um, but I just think that this is really handy. It is such a lightweight leather which means that it is, you know, it isn't heavy at all. It has a shoulder strap which I've just got tucked into the bag, but you can actually remove this on the sides, you can adjust it. I just like to tuck it in, and then what I do is I twist those, um, what do you call it? I twist it up so that you can't really see on the side. Um, to me, I find that that's the easiest way to go, but I love it. It's a great size for me and all my essentials. You can kind of see I'm using it at the moment, and it's just one large compartment with a small slip pocket in there as well. So it's getting really dark in here. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I've just gotten so much joy out of wearing this. I think it's such a classic design and the quality is there as well. So definitely a good one. And I like the fact that it stands up on its own as well. You can see here, it's not flopping in on itself, which definitely is something that you will get with the larger uh, day tote style. So that is the first gifted item. Then let's kind of stick with accessories. I have a pair of boots and these just kind of fulfill all of my winter boot needs. I've really gotten into sock boots. <laughs> you may have noticed. Um, I'm so into this style and I had been looking at a pair from Tony Bianco for a while. They're made of more of a knitted fabric. I will link those down below. Maybe I'll put a photo on screen as well so you can kind of see. Um, but I hadn't pulled the trigger on it. And I recently did some work with Merchant 1948, which if you live in New Zealand, then you might be familiar with the brand, but it's part of the Mipiachi family. And as part of that, I got to select some shoes for myself. And I picked these really cute little leather sock booties. And these are just everything I was after and then some. They are such a soft leather. They've got the zip up closure on the side here, so they fit really nice and snug. They are a pointed toe, which I personally kind of gravitate towards because I find that it just makes your legs look longer because it draws the eye down further. I've talked about this so many times. And then it also has a really reasonable heel height as well. So nothing too high. I'm not a big stiletto wearer these days. 10 centimeters, usually a little bit too high. And I'm kind of tottering around a little bit. So I really like these. I think they're such a great kind of winter staple. They look really lovely with tights, but also equally, I can pair them with a lot of my skirts as well, and they are very comfortable as well. So pretty thrilled with them. I got them my usual size, which is a European 40. And then the final gifted thing I wanted to talk about is a skirt, and oh God, the skirt is so beautiful. I'm loving wearing it. It is a lot more feminine than what I have been wearing recently, but I just think it is so stunning. It has got just the most beautiful movement to it as well. It's really swishy. It is this skirt from Bowden. So you may know that every single month Bowden is very generous and they gift me some product and this was one of my uh, July selects and I just thought the color was just so beautiful, so rich. It's a lovely rust color. I don't think it's coming off on camera properly just because of the lighting, I think. But I will show you on the cutaways. Hopefully that will give you a better depiction. And I have worn this on the blog as well, which I'll link that blog post down below if you'd like to go and see. Uh, but I just thought this was such a beautiful piece. And as you can kind of see, it does sort of float out at the hemline a little bit. But it just moves so nicely. And it's quite substantial and thick as well. It feels very weighty just feels very luxurious and it's really nice paired with big oversized sweaters but I think this would look really beautiful for the office as well with a really lovely blouse, maybe something with a high neck or even just a simple button up blouse. Also hopefully this will be helpful but I will make sure I leave all of my sizing information for these items down in the description box below. So those are kind of the winter items that I've added to my wardrobe recently. Obviously there are a few other bits 
because I don't really shop in season. I tend to kind of purchase things when I see it and then incorporate it into my wardrobe as the seasons come along. Uh, that's my preferred way to shop because I find that you can get really good bargains and deals that way, especially if you have patience. But I hope that you enjoyed this. I'd love to know if you have a favorite piece that I added to my closet. I would love to know what you have been adding to your wardrobe recently, if there's any sort of standout items. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I will see you on Thursday with a new video. It will be a new What I Wear in a Week video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then. Bye.